tell me that he smiles on his children there, and his smiles drive their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again. In the lovely, lovely, uncloudy day. Oh, Second Timothy, y'all got me all messed up. Second Timothy in chapter four. We're gonna have some help tonight. Second Timothy in chapter number four. Verse verse number uh, number six. Paul writes these words to Timothy. He says, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and, in, and, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you and praise you, God, for another opportunity together with our brothers and sisters. Father, I ask you tonight, Lord God, if there be any spirit that's, that's uh, not of the Holy Spirit, God, to just dismiss it out of this place. Father, for tonight we need to hear from you. We don't need to hear from, uh, from me, God. We, we need to hear directly from the throne above. And Father, tonight we just ask you to, to speak to our hearts, Lord God. Uh, bring us all a little closer to you than we've ever been before in our lives. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanksgiving for us in your holy and precious name we do pray. Amen and amen. Tonight I, I want to... Uh, I want to bring to you a message that, that the Lord has, He's been dealing with me about this, this uh, situation, this scenario that's taking place in, in our world today. And, uh, and, and, and tonight we're going to get into that. But I want you to understand uh, what's taking place here in the book of, of 2 Timothy and over in 1 Timothy. Uh, Paul is writing... Uh, to Timothy in, in exhorting him. He's building him up. He's strongly encouraging him. He's edifying him and he's telling him, uh, prepare yourself for the ministry. Uh, because as you prepare yourself for the ministry, uh, you're going to run into some things. And in 1 Timothy, he talks about uh, uh, the things that Timothy may in, encounter and endure. And then in 2 Timothy, it's just a, it's a continuation of the exact same things. And as he nears the end of his letter uh, to, to Timothy here in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he, he begins to talk about himself, number one. And, and, and I want you to understand uh, that Paul is not being arrogant in the, in the faith, but Paul is, is being confident in the faith. He says, uh, he says I, I want you to understand uh, that my time or departure is at hand. It, it's getting close to the end of my days. And, and he says, and because it's getting close, he said, I want you to understand uh, I have fought a good fight. He said, I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about keeping the faith. Paul, in his, in his confidence of what uh, Christ had done for him on the cross of Calvary and by, and by being raised that third day out of the tomb, he said, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. 
And, and, and he said, the, the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give, uh, shall give me uh, at that day, at, at the time that, that we begin to be judged. And he said, not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. This seems to be, if you read the entire context of the book of 2 Timothy, this particular passage seems to be, y'all try to say that three or four times real quick, particular passage seems to be just a little bit out of place. Because Paul, he excuses himself from exhorting Timothy and charging Timothy and telling Timothy all these things. And it seems like Paul changes gears here. And he said, you know what? It's, it's, uh, there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. But he said, it's not only for me, but it's also for all them that love his appearing. I'm going to talk tonight about keeping the faith. He says to him, he says, do thy diligence to come unto me shortly. And then he says, For Demas has forsaken me. Demas has forsaken me. There's a man by the name of Demas, and, 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 and he's mentioned here in this passage of Scripture. He's mentioned a couple of other places in the, in the Bible. But Paul gives this testimony about Demas. He said he's forsaken me. And tonight I want you to understand and I want you to realize that as Paul was, was ready in Timothy for the ministry, as Paul was, was exhorting him and edifying him for the ministry, uh, Paul gave to Timothy something here uh, that we need to grab hold of tonight because what was your Sunday school lessons? I am a minister. I'm a minister, and I want you to understand that as we uh, come in into God's house on a Sunday night and in, in, in uh, the first part of February, that we are ready in ourselves for the ministry that God has ahead for us. And, what, and, as, and in preparing for the ministry, you need to understand something. That everybody that, that, that is around you uh, in, in your daily walk, that there's going to be some that's going to forsake you. There's going to be some that's going to turn their back on you. There's going to be some that, that uh, though you thought they'd go to the ends of the world, they're going to be gone when trouble comes. Y'all, I'm going to tell you tonight that that is just part of the ministry. There, there is uh, those that, uh, uh, that I, I, I'll just be honest with you, in, in my time I've, I've had friends uh, of mine that have uh, really surprised me and really shocked me. I've had friends of mine that, that I thought that, that, that they'd be there uh, through thick and through thin. And then you go through something and you look around and you say, well, where are they at? I want to tell you this tonight. I understand this, that we've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand this, that this, even though it may seem out of place in reading the entire context of 2 Timothy, this is not out of place. This was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God that, he was, uh, that Paul was telling Timothy about these things. He said, I want you to understand uh, that there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. And it's not because I'm the most popular here on this earth, but it's because I fought a good fight and because I've kept the faith, uh, the faith in, in, in my work and, I, and my, my days are numbered and, and, but, but Timothy you can do the same thing that I did you can keep on trucking you can keep on going I'm going to tell y'all tonight I, and, and, and I'm, not, uh, I'm not here to uplift a man or, or to uh, uh, speak great things about a man but I, I want to share with you uh, uh, one of my heroes uh, one of my heroes in the faith is, is uh, Roger Watkins. He was my pastor when I got saved. He, and and uh, he, he was the, 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 the man that, uh, that I got down into the baptistry with that, that dunked me. I thank the world, thank the world of Brother Roger. But you know what? It, it, in, in looking at his life and and, and, and when, when the Lord called me to preach, He was the first person that I called outside of my family. When the Lord called me to, 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 uh, to preach His Word, I, I called uh, Brother Roger, and I, I'll never forget it. I had surrendered to the call. I, it, it was in 2008, and I uh, hadn't seen Brother Roger in years and years. And 
uh, and, and hadn't spoke to him in, in uh, uh, several years. And uh, I called him. I said, Brother Roger, I said, the Lord's called me to preach. And he said, I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, I don't know. Uh, to, where, he said, where do I need to send a sympathy card? And I said, well, Brother Roger, I'm excited about this. He said, son, listen to me. He said, if God's called you to it, you've got to do it. But he said, it ain't no easy task. It's not no easy thing to do it, to preach the gospel. He said, you're going to have people turn their back on you. You're going to have people stab you in the back. You're going to have people talk about you. You're gonna... And I was thinking, my gosh, this is the uplifting that I get. And I thought, my goodness, you know. And he said something to me that night on the telephone. I was staying in a camper over in Athens, Alabama. And, and, and he said something to me that night. He said, listen to me, son. He said, but Jesus won't never leave you. And if he's called you, he'll equip you. And if he's called you, he'll be right there with you. He said, don't worry about anything else. He said, I ain't. And it was just about like this. He said, I ain't got long in this old world. He said, I'll pray for you and, and I'll cheer you on and I'll, I'll do those things for you. But I've not got long, John, but you just keep on keeping on. Tonight I tell you, just keep on keeping on. Amen. Just keep on keeping on. Hold to the faith. Keep the faith. Hold fast until the end. There is a crown of righteousness, y'all. The, the Bible said, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. He's got a crown of righteousness laid up for each one of you. If you just keep the faith. Amen. Just hang on. Now, now tonight I, I, I said I wanted to get into this. It's Sunday night. And Doreen ain't here, so I can take my coat off. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. He said, For Demas hath forsaken me. And y'all, tonight I, I want to I wanna speak to you just very quickly and very, very briefly. And I know y'all, some of you's rolling your eyes right there, but I promise I'm going to be brief. Demas, in this passage of Scripture, is somebody that, that we've got in our society today. They've got in our church society today. He's a done. D-O-N-E. He's done. And y'all, tonight I, I want you to understand what, what it is I'm saying to you. Demas at one time was right alongside Paul. Demas at one time sat under the teaching of Paul. Uh, at one time, he 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 was there when 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 the the sick were being healed and and all of these things. But all of a sudden, Demas leaves and forsakes Paul and and walks away from the ministry. That is the Duns. And y'all, I'm going to tell you something. The the statistics show that in our churches, of the people that attend our churches uh, uh, of today. In, in, our, in our world, those that have a religious affiliation, a religious affiliation with churches, that 37% are done. They're done. They don't want anything to do with the ministry. They don't, wanna, they don't, go, they don't go to church. They, they're just done. And how many tonight, if, you, if you're listening to what I'm saying to you tonight, I want you to go with me. How many folk do you know that at one time they went to church? At one time they were on fire for the Lord. At one time they were singing in the choir. At one time they were teaching a Sunday school class. At one time they were uh, the one that, uh, the usher that takes up the offering. At one time they were putting the offering in the offering plate. But you know where they are today? They're just done. They're done. They don't want any more of, of, of what the Lord has to offer because they've, they, they, they've gotten to a point in their lives where they think, man, there's nothing to that. And I'm going to show you why. Because it's located right here in the Scripture because it says, Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world. When we, when, y'all listen to me tonight, and I know I'm preaching to the Sunday night crowd, and I, I understand that, and... Uh, uh, but I want you to get what I'm saying to you. When we put things of this world above the things of God, 
and we're loving the things of this world more than we're loving the things of God, it doesn't matter if it's football, basketball, soccer, anything else, anything you name, work, deer hunting, bass fishing, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, if, you, if you have put, placed something above, uh, above God in your life, you know what you've done? You have been a lover of this present world and you, now you're becoming a done. These travel ball, and I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna jump off on that for just a moment. But there was a time in, 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 in our church society today where if somebody talked about practicing ball on a Sunday or going and playing a game on a Sunday, the churches would have shut that down. Amen. They would have shut that down in a heartbeat. They'd have said, uh uh, you can't do that. I, I can remember a time in, when I was a, just a kid when the coaches of, of, uh, of the uh, of the, the schools would call the pastors and say, when are you scheduling revival? Because we do not want to have our, our two-a-day practices during revival. My, 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 how things have changed. But you know what we do now? We schedule our church around the things of this world. There's a lot of churches tonight that have called off because of the, there's a Super Bowl or something going on. We, we, we rotate and move our, our, our services and everything else around the things of this world. I'll tell you this, and, and I'm, 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 I'm going to say this, and, 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 I, and I want you to take it the way I mean it, maybe not the way it sounds, but you know, when, when I was in contact with Brother Jeff LeBorg about coming and preaching revival, I asked him, I said, Brother Jeff, I said, I, I said we're, we're available. I, I said, I want, I, we're, we're going to work with your schedule. Whatever, whatever you got, and, and and I said we we just want we just whenever you can be available to come and preach to us. Well, he he said, well let me get back with you in just a day or two. I said okay. We well, calls me back. And he said, listen. And I talked about him because I know he's a pastor and I know he travels all over the United States preaching the word. And I, and I, I know those things. He's got a, a, a media church that's just unbelievable. He does a podcast. He, he teaches. He, he, he does all of these things. And, and I was thinking, man, I, if, if we, you know, we just got to be available to his schedule. Well, he calls me back and he said, Brother John, he said, uh, uh, I know you just talked to me about Monday through Wednesday, but you care if I come on a Sunday night? Yeah, I said, you just come right ahead, brother. I said, you just come right ahead. And, and he said, well, if you can do a Sunday night and, and a Monday through Wednesday, can we do it the last week in March? I said, absolutely, brother Jeff, absolutely. Well, I, I, man, I was just excited. <laughs> I thought, wow, hallelujah, we're going to have revival. And, I, and, you know, I've talked to this man, and he's fired up about coming. Whenever a, a preacher says, hey, give me another day, Hey man, I'm gonna give it to you. But he says, he said, uh, I, I'll be there. And I said, all right, brother, we're gonna write it down. And I appreciate it. I, I boy, I was excited. I texted my wife, and she said, oh great. And then she, here in just a minute, she texts me back. She said, that's the week of spring break. <laughs> I said, you know what? Maybe that'll help us. Hey man. Amen. Maybe that'll help us. Maybe the kids ain't got to get up and go to school. Let him preach till 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Let somebody get saved that ain't got to get up and go to school the next day. You know what? I'm, not, I'm sick and tired of rotating everything we do in the church around what's going on in this world. Y'all, tonight, let me tell you something. That's in being in love with this world. That's what happened to Demas. That's why we have so many duns. They're done. Church, tonight I'm going to tell you something. We need to pray for the duns. We need to lift up the duns. We've got some in our church, some that are members of our church that's done. I've been reaching out to some of them this week and, and calling them and texting them and they don't want to hear from me and they don't want to talk to me. I'll just tell you. Because I'm like them guys at the, at the coffee shop. This morning. I'm like, where you at? Where you been? Hey, Amen. But we've got some of them that are done. Y'all, we need to pray for the duns because I love the duns. Amen. Amen. God wants to use the duns. 
The Bible tells us that we're the body of Christ and, 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 and that we all have our place and we all have our, our purpose in the body of Christ. You know what? It's kind of hard to reach a lost and dying world when you got one arm tied behind your back. When you're limping on one leg, Brother Pee Wee, it's kind of hard to reach a lost and dying world. Amen. And that's what we're doing spiritually. Because of the duns, the ones that need to be here that's not here anymore because they just fell in love with this present world and, and we're, we're, we're one-eyed and we're one-armed and we're one-legged and we're, we ain't got but one ear. We can't, we can't talk but out of one side of our mouth. That's what's going on because of the duns because they were in love with this present world. Y'all church, church, listen to me tonight. We don't need to judge those people. We don't need to, uh, 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 to, to, to do anything but pray for them, uplift them and try to bring them back into the body. Amen. 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 How many has ever stubbed your toe and, and, and got mad at your toe and just kicked the wall or something? <laughs> That's a pretty good example, ain't it? Because I ain't never done that. Why would we do that with our church folk? Why would we do that with those that are done? You know, they're a part of the body and, and they're hurting and, 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 and maybe they're not where they need to be or maybe they're not where they're supposed to be. But why would we go and kick them while they're down? We ought to be praying for them, lifting them up, trying to draw them back in. Saying, tell them, hey, you know, listen, God's got a place for you. He's got a job for you. Amen. Amen. All right. You got Demas... He said, Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world and he's departed. Now, I'm going to be real quick so I want you to turn over with me a couple of verses. Paul says this in verse uh, 14. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou aware also. For he hath greatly withstood our words. You know what Alexander the coppersmith was? He was a nun. A nun. He had no religious affiliation. He didn't want any religious affiliation. The Bible says that he was a coppersmith. The Bible tells us he done much evil to Paul. Why? Because Paul was preaching about a God that nobody could see. Paul was telling them that you don't need an idol. You don't need idols in your house. Well, that cut into the coppersmith's work because that was his job to create idols for people to put up in their, in their places of stay so that way they could worship or pray to them or, or anything like that. And the Bible says that Alexander the coppersmith did much evil to Paul. He was a nun. N-O-N-E. -N -E. You've got the duns, and then a few verses later you've got the nuns. We all know people like that, don't we? Don't want to talk about the Lord. Don't want to talk about the things of God. Don't... Uh, they, they don't want any religious affiliation whatsoever. They don't want to go to a church. Uh, they don't want to do anything like that. Uh, and, and there was a man sharing with me this week that he invited this guy uh, that was from Michigan and he said he cusses every breath and he raised his cane all the time. But he said, I felt like I needed to invite him to our church. I said, praise God. Amen. 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 Absolutely. That's the ones we want in here. Amen. Because that's the ones that, that the Lord can do a, a, a 180 in their life and just clean them up from the inside out. Y'all, this, this evening, I want to tell you something. That in our world in which we live, we've got a whole lot of duns that we need to pray for. Oh, but we've got a whole lot of nuns Amen. that need to be pointed in the right direction. You know, I ask myself and I, I, I begin to think about, God, why? I, I, because this, I can't wrap my mind around. I cannot wrap my mind around for the life of me somebody that don't want anything to do with God. Somebody that don't want anything to do with the Lord Jesus. After all He did for us, 
And he didn't just do it for the church, y'all. He done it for the whole world. He died for every one of us. He, he, he shed his life's blood for every one of us. And it boggles my mind. How could anybody not want a part of that? Amen. A nun. And they'll do evil to the church. They'll do evil to the men of God, to the things of God. Because I'm going to tell you something. And y'all, Alexander the coppersmith is, is one of the earliest examples. But do you know that as, as, as revival came sweeping through the land uh, with preachers like Billy Sunday and, 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 and uh, 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 preachers like, uh, his name just left me, uh, Jonathan Edwards and all of those that, 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 that seen a great amount of revival during their lifetimes, do you know that they had numerous death threats against them by the bar owners? By those that were they're putting on strip shows? Had numerous death threats against them by, by those that were running moonshine? Because something would happen when they'd come into town and revival would start to break out. Something would take place and all of the folks that used to be at the beer joint would now be at the church house. Something would take place and those that used to be at the peep show would now be at the church house. They were still drinking. They was just drinking from a different cup. They were still seeing something awesome, but it was something awesome and mighty from Almighty God. It was something that God wanted to do with them. And y'all, they had numerous death threats against them. Why? Because it cut into those folks' financial profit. Amen. I won't start cutting into the financial profit of those that are around us that are selling pornography. Amen. I want to start cutting into the profits of those that are selling alcohol at Henniger and those that are selling alcohol at Fort Payne. I want to start cutting in and, and making an impact and a difference in this world. There was a time when the church of the living God actually impacted the world. But y'all, it's so many times that it, it, it looks like in our day and in our culture, the, the world's starting to impact us instead of the other way around. When we start redefining our, doctrine, our doctrinal beliefs so that way we don't offend anybody? Come on. You start ordaining homosexuals? Come on. You, you want to uh, uh, marry folks? And y'all listen to me. This is, this is happening all around us. And they're so, the, the world, the God of this world, the Bible tells us, has blinded these people. They don't, they, 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 they're, they don't know any better. They're sinners. And what do sinners do? They sin. And they live for Satan. And they live like, the, the, like Satan wants them to live. But where is the church during the midst of all this? I'll tell you where we're at. Right where we've always been. Except we're not doing anything about it. We're not doing anything about it. Wonder how many more nuns it's going to take before the church starts doing something about them. I had to tell you a quick story. Back, it's been several, several years ago. We had a had a bus full of kids, and we'd went up to a trailer park out here in Sylvania, and we were stopping at every trailer that had a a wagon or a tricycle or. Something parked outside. We were stopping at every, every, every house trailer up there. We've been inviting folks to Bible school, inviting them kids to Bible school. I let my teenage kids out the bus, and they'd run out the bus, and they had these little flyers, and they'd go knock on doors, and they'd hand them flyers, and you know, and and, and all that stuff was going on. And, and uh, we went one weekend. The next weekend, we come back around. And uh, we was going to hit anybody we'd missed. Maybe hit some of them twice, you know what I'm saying? Let it be persistent, you know. And uh, we pulled up to this one, one place, and I was letting these kids out. And uh, one of them little girls said, uh, Brother John, I'm not going back to that house. I said, why not? She said, that guy cussed me out last week. I said, really? 
She said, I promise, Brother John. She said, hey, she said I didn't tell you, but she said, he, he cussed me out. He told me to get off his porch. I said, that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> Amen. I said, that's where I want to go. I said, thanks for telling me. And I, I looked back there, Miss Debbie Busby was on the bus with me. She was helping me keep all those kids straight. I said, Debbie, you watch them. Then? You watch them. I'm going right there. I go and I knock on the man's door and he wasn't at home. Nobody was there, but man, I wanted to share Jesus with him. I wanted so bad to share the Lord with him. He was a nun. And church, listen to me. We need to have compassion for the nuns. We need to reach out to them because hey, otherwise, they're going to die and go to hell. Amen. If this church, if we don't do something, they're going to die and go to hell. You've got the nuns, you've got the duns. And I want to show you something real quick. It says, he tells him, and, and I want you to understand this tonight, as you're ministering, you're going to have the duns and you're going to have the nuns. And, and you minister to them in, in different ways. In verse 15 it says, you, Of whom be thou ware also. So he's telling P, uh, Timothy here, he says, You beware of Alexander the coppersmith, for he hath greatly withstood our words. They were still speaking to him. Did y'all get that? He said he's greatly withstood our words. So be careful you watch him, but keep talking. Just keep talking. And he says, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may uh, not be laid to their charge. Now listen to what I'm going to say to you this, this night. Verse 16, Paul tells about his time during the ministry. And he says, you know what? At, at one time, everybody left me. Everybody forsook me. Wouldn't nobody have anything to do with me? And he said, you know what? I hope God don't hold that against them. He said, I hope we don't lay it to their charge. He, he said, you know what? I, I've understood. I, I, even the duns. The nuns. Everybody come against you. During your time in ministry, as you are a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you may have times when you feel like you're standing all alone. You say, Brother John, I know I'm never all alone. Well, I'm going to let me, let's walk back through the Bible. Elijah, what did Elijah say? He said, God, I'm the last one on this earth. Won't you just kill me? He had just seen God send fire down from heaven. The Bible says that, that the fire licked up all the water that was around the altar and burnt the altar and burnt what was on the altar. He had just seen a great miracle of God. Killed 400 of, of, of uh, the Baal worshipers or the Baal priests right there on the side of that hill. In just a few days, he was in a cave hiding out, worried about his life. And he said, God, I'm all by myself. If Elijah can feel like he's all by himself, then you're not no better than Elijah is. Amen. You might feel like one of these days, man, I'm, I feel like I'm all by myself. You get right in the middle of the work week and you, 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 you get fired up and inspired. You're going to do something for the Lord this week. And then all of a sudden toward the middle of the week and Satan's got you beat down and, and got you pushed back and, and you feel like you're all alone. Nobody cares. You call John, John don't answer the phone. You say, man, I, my pastor won't even answer the phone. I promise you I'll try. But I can't always be it right at the, the edge of a phone. You hear me? You might feel like, man, I'm all alone. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Paul felt like that. Elijah felt like that. There'll come times in your lives that you'll feel like that. But let me tell you something. We've got a world full of nuns and duns that we're supposed to be reaching. That's the drive of the church. Should be your drive. If you're just worried about those in your family, shame on you. Should we worry about those in our family? Absolutely, but not just them. Scripture tells us, and I'm closing, I promise. 
Scripture tells us that when Christ would come to a place, it would always say He looked on them with compassion. With compassion. I'm asking you to look on folks with compassion. I'm asking you to see them with compassion. Don't matter if they're nuns or if they're duns. Speak to them. Work on them. Because, y'all, that's what's going to change this world. It doesn't matter what Congress does. It doesn't matter what the White House does. It doesn't matter about the local elections. What will change this world is the church being the church, worrying about the nuns and the duns. That's it, church. Eric, play us a song. Y'all stand to your feet. If you need to come up here tonight and you need to pray for somebody that you know that's done, Come pray for them. If you need to come pray for somebody that's a nun, or if you need to come pray for yourself and say, God, encourage me, strengthen me to do this work that you've got ahead for me. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it.
Anybody got a word tonight? All right. Thanks for the Lord's working. He's moving. Uh, Amen. We, uh, we've got us a new Bible school director, Sister Angela Bryan. Um, the Lord's put that on her heart, so praise God. Amen. Uh, and y'all, I um, want you to jump in there and help any way you can. Uh, one of the greatest outreaches that we have in, as a church and Looking forward to a good Bible school. Amen. Anybody else word? Anybody else word? Oh yeah, uh, mission trip sign up sheet is in the back. Uh, where Brother Brian coming? I forgot to announce that this morning. Where Brother Brian came last Sunday night and shared with us uh, about Mobile. Uh, feel free to sign up. Uh, I nailed down with him an approximate cost per person uh, to go down there for this a uh, week. Is is roughly. sort of uh, mission fundraiser or something, we'll, if you need financial help getting there, we can, we, we'll help you. Uh, but that sign-up sheet's there in the back, and uh, so feel free, if, you, if that's what the Lord's leading you to do, to, to sign that. Uh, anybody else? Remember, uh, Wednesday night, Bible study, we're in Hebrews, and I don't know if anybody else is getting anything, but boy, I'm Amen. loving it. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm a loving it and enjoying uh, getting getting deep in the Lord's Word. I, uh, I encourage you to come if you've not been. I want this Wednesday, that's right, for everybody party, never mind. <laughs> I was going to be prepared and ready, but I'm going to come. Yeah. Uh, all right, and uh, next Saturday, next Saturday, now, I, you know, I want you to come and eat spaghetti with me. It's the only thing I can cook. You see, there's spaghetti or scrambled eggs. I think everybody likes spaghetti better. Uh, so, I can't grill cheese. <laughs> Brother Don, you come back like you're in.